our conversation continues. Mwashimiwa, we had mentioned, you know, the question of Azimio One Kenya Coalition Political mm -hmm. Party and whether this coalition will last until 27 and go into the election of 2027. What do you think? You see it lasting? On, on and I'm asking part. this question mm. based on the history of the coalitions that you've participated in before. Mm -hmm. Cod Coalition, 2013. 20, 20, there was NAC, by the way. Yeah. Mm. Yes, there was NAC. NAC Coalition, <laughs> NAC coalition mm -hmm. broke yeah. by I the next the election. Into power. And then 2013, there was the Cod Coalition. Mm -hmm. By 2017, a lot of tear gas. there was another coalition. <laughs> mm. 2022, another coalition. Do you that see was NASA, this one? By the way. Yeah, it was NASA in 2017. Mm. Do you see this one going to the next election? Well, um, I wouldn't be worried about that, uh, Eric. Um, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, the end game, and it's not being Machiavellian, but we, we have to remain responsive to the political situation in the country. For now, I can tell you with confidence that it's the intention of all of us, members of uh, Azumio La Moja One Kenya uh, Coalition Party, to remain united. We think it is in the best interest of our country. It is in the best interest of evolution of democratic practice in our country. Um, and we don't want to disappoint Kenyans because they, uh, I keep hearing uh, them saying, please hold together, please hold together, so that you will at any given time have two main political formations. Mm. Uh, however, um, you can never rule out the possibility of some people feeling disgruntled or something. Um, I only, uh, my urge is if that situation arises, we should discuss. Remember, I started by saying uh, the next political contest in the form of a general election, all right? will have to be defined in 2024. Mm. So this is a time to define these things, debunk our own coalition, yep. find out where did the rain, for example, start beating us, and so that we can remain united. Mm. But I can tell you that as of, of now, I have no indications whatsoever from any of our coalition partners that they would want to act in a manner that will diminish the effectiveness of a coalition because we must hold mm. this government to account. You know the conversation about 2024 being the determinant yes. for 2027 has been said by you this morning more than once. Yes. But in that coalition of yours, you're the only one so far that I've had saying it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the others have said it, but we haven't heard it. Mm -hmm. We have, but we have seen some movement, internal movements within the Azimio One Kenya coalition of trying to have conversations that maybe would shape the direction of Azimio or would shape the direction out of Azimio. The Kamwene conversation, for example, that's spearheaded by some members of Jubilee and NAC Kenya. And you have even made a comment about that. Yeah, I did. Um, and I can tell you that I'm well informed that that is a caucus. So, as far as I know, uh, my sister mother and my friend Jeremiah Kioni have been the proponents and they mean well. They mean well in, in terms of wanting to, to set, set, pass certain political messages, particular, particularly in the Mount Kenya region. Mm. But all within, because they've assured us, all within Azumeo Lomoja Wan Kenya, uh, I've not heard any of them say they may want to leave uh, the coalition. Mm. Okay, let's look at the coalition and the reasons why it came together in the first place. And it mm. seemed as though, you know, here we're looking at circumstances, in most cases, will influence what you will do. And here, a lot of people come together, who maybe were together before, maybe were not. Mm. But circumstances brought this coalition together. And I'm still coming back to the point where Kalonzo Musyoka has said he wants to be president 2027, again, for the purposes of this room for now. Yeah, yeah. 2027, you want to be president in that year. From a coalition whose interests are as, are as diverse as they come, and who may have other individuals who want to be in that position, it will be a position that you have been in before. This coalition having come together on those diverse points, should they decide or should conversations happen when a different flag bearer from Kalonzo Musyoka is chosen? 
play that against your conviction to be president of this country, will you remain? And it is a reality or it's a possibility of a reality that you must take into consideration, bearing on the fact the manner in which things have happened historically. Allow me in do mm. not to engage in speculation mm. about what will happen to the coalition or what will not happen to the coalition. For now, take it. Take it, perhaps, as they say, to the bank, mm. right? That you're dealing with, with a very serious political, uh, with a very serious presidential hopeful. Yes. Mm. Very serious. Okay. Take it that. Because it's the best interest of the country, not just because of, I've actually said, I'm the face of a struggle. The face of a struggle, the Kenyans who are suffering. High taxation, like has never happened before. I've heard uh, William Ruto argue that he, he wants to practice uh, uh, Kibaki type of economics. Mm. He forgets that I was Kibaki's deputy, mm. we like vice, for five years. And Kenyans who know, President Kibaki had some health challenges. Mm -hmm. Who do you think, who do you think, William Ruto, who do you think was driving a Kibaki, Kibakinomics, if you like? Raila, All right? Raila so, has told us it was him. No, no. Uh, Raila and Kalonzo are together. Okay. But I was the principal assistant to pre President Kibaki. When the economy of this country grew, actually grew substantially, at about 7% of GDP hmm. under Kibaki, I keep on telling people that Quebec was so selfless that even when we were launching this Thika superhighway, and I see he's already having huge problems with traffic, but it's a major piece of infrastructure. Quebec was so selfless, we would not even allow it to be named after him. He asked me, Vice President, you, you want me to have this named after me, but that this road will lead to some place. Of course, that was the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. We worked with Quebec. We have the experience. And the experience, therefore, informs us that this country is headed the wrong way. You cannot tax Kenyans, right? And I call this a slush fund, by the way. Mm. It's a matter that is converse, one of the issues that I think William wants to discuss with the Chief Justice, mm. right? Because their, their main concern is this housing tax, which is uh, Minister for Finance calls uh, <laughs> uh, investment levy. <laughs> I don't know who is fooling who. And the PS housing appeared before the National Dialogue Committee and called it a tax. Mm. That, that, so this is a situation which is unacceptable. And if you allow people to be overtaxed and they cannot take their children to school, children are now going back to school. How, parents are crying all over. There's confusion in the entire education system. Remember, I was Minister for Education for three and a half years. Okay, and I know that time when we started free primary education with Mr. Kibaki. Even that, we are seeing a situation of winding back, winding back uh, the gains in, in, in terms of free and compulsory primary education. So, why would you think that yours truly would be persuaded this time round to give way when he has given so much so much to the struggle, mm. the face of a struggling nation. A face is saying no to impunity. The face says the only document we have that can hold us, and we painstakingly negotiated uh, Constitution 2010, and all of us state officers are to swear to uphold the Constitution, all right, out there to Uhuru Park. By the way, I think they have messed up Uhuru Park. I feel very unhappy about it. Because they were thinking maybe people will move from Oru Park and drive them out of State House. I think Kenyans <laughs> better understand how to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but whatever is happening, there's a different story. We saw uh, that to, to uphold the rule of law in accordance with the Constitution. I repeat, fidelity, hashtag fidelity to the Constitution. The Constitution. So, therefore, um, do, please do not belabor the point. Kenyans know each other. We know each other as leaders. Mm. We know. It's just like they don't want to say it now. Mm. Uh, as but my you are the next. party organ said, you know, we will push this thing through uh -huh. the normal channels. Due process. In due course, due process, delegates conference. This is the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kalonzo, you were recently given an opportunity by parliament to co-chair 
the national dialogue. And in that national dialogue, of course, like you've said, the Azimio side brought some issues to the table. The Kenya Kwanza side brought some issues to the table. Kenyans had brought their issues to the table long before. And one of the issues, the big issues, was the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And then there were other issues, of course, coupled with the political and the healing process from 2022 that talked about reviewing the uh, election outcome and ensuring that there's electoral justice going forward. The report that came out of that lengthy process did not adequately address the issue of the cost of living, which is what is, like you've said, is currently front and center of Kenyans' minds. Mm -hmm. What do you tell Kenyans? Why did you fail them? I tell Kenyans not to lose hope. We were very clear, and we tried to help this government, mm. <laughs> uh, or this regime if you like, to see that Kenyans were suffering. But they didn't want to. So we find the elephant ears. Um, we tried to even get them. Uh, there's a young man uh, called uh, Cheruyot, <laughs> the leader of the majority in the Senate. Yep. I, I find him, I find him uh, proactive. He tried to do whatever he could to convince his colleagues on the other side, checking with KRA and others what it is they could give or not give. Um, and he came and briefed us. Uh, but at the end of the day, we said a shilling here, a shilling there from a road uh, levy or something. It doesn't, doesn't add up. And so we told them that we have agreed to, to disagree and Kenyans have the option to take the necessary action. Now, which might include them demonstrating, because one of the things that is now clear in Kenya's mind is it is their constitutional right to pick it to demonstrate as occasion demands, provided, and there's always that very important proviso, they do so unarmed. Mm. So please remember, we lost close to 80 young Kenyans because of demonstrations. Mm. They could not even allow us to even give them decent uh, send-off, mm. including a recon mass. Mm. Even the churches were given instructions not to allow mm. um, us to go out and then pray for the, the, the souls of the, uh, these young people. The pain that country went through last year was excruciating and it is still there bottomed up all right so we did our best and this report now is before parliament okay but then Moshimiwa, kenyans but on the cost of living kenyans, we have disagreed through i was to insist that this cost of living eric yeah. we need to insist the cost of living is a big issue look at this tax why are they so obsessed with this housing tax this is what would drive Kenya Kwanza home. If they, if they listen to, if they care to listen. Yep. Yeah. Because every Kenyan with a pay slip, the middle class, you see, in order to help the hustler nation, you don't have to slay the goose that lays the golden egg. And that the Kenyan middle class, over years, unlike many African nations, mm. this country has developed a middle class, mm. complete with a diaspora and I'm sure a lot of them are listening to your shows, mm -hmm. who know that the remittances from Kenyans abroad, sometimes, I think, is already overtaken uh, our agricultural exports. It is top right. Nice. It's top right. Yep. The top thing. That Why would you want to discourage these Kenyans? It is not the business of government to go, go and building houses. Make, make the environment attractive. There are a lot of private developers, by the way, who have been doing this, and they can afford to sell these houses cheaply, where there is you know, the market forces, so that if you're overselling your, your, your flats or something, your development, uh, the developments that you, real estate developers everywhere, all right, that competition is healthy. But we are in defense of the middle class. These are the people who make it possible for Kenyans to at least uh, acre living. Mary if you now overtax you them, you overtax them, yeah. then you kill them. If elections are held tomorrow, I'll tell you what I'll do if I was elected president. I will, with the first executive order, like William Ruto did, to, uh, to get those judges. To appoint judges. Appoint appoint judges. judges. Yours would be too. to To do away with that housing tax. Mm. The Azimio Manifesto talked about housing. Yeah, but your it presidential didn't say you overtax and kill people. Your presidential uh -huh. candidate talked about implementing the housing fund 
which Uhuru had tried to do, but was taught, stopped by the court. I think they listened. And in not Raila only that, had I said, think they listened. We yeah. are going to reintroduce the housing fund. We will follow process, but we will have a housing fund. So what you happened, are also Eric? going to form a housing fund. Had yeah, you been Thank elected you. into Thank office? Thank you. After following due process, mm. after listening to Kenyans, I've had uh, some of these uh, psycho funds uh, say that even against a court order, they will go on and have public participation <laughs> over these issues. They begin today, I call that psychophancy. Mm. I call it, a, a, it's a really degrading uh, the rule of law. Uh, Kenyans must have a conversation. Wha how many Kenyans say they would welcome the idea of a housing tax after due process, after the, uh, the matter was canvassed before parliament? The majority of them, over 90%, including key stakeholders, captains of industry and others, all right, who are now forced to even lay off Kenyans. Do you know that during our talks we discovered, for example, over 6,000 companies registered and operating in Kenya had actually moved to the regions, mm -hmm. right? That means loss of Kenyan jobs. That's what I'm saying. This thing called housing tax will drive William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza home. Do you know what? The if they don't listen. Sure. Do you know what the perception is? in some quarters, and I think it is important sometimes to look at what the perception is, that there's a lot of clamor on this one thing for, for, for a time where many Kenyans are united, unfortunately, in the grieving of the loss because of the economy. Yeah. And that it is being used as currency to drive popularism here. No. This is the perception, and we must accept okay, it. Okay, no, yeah, continue. So that because one side is not in government, that, that thing is being used to push an agenda. And that what is the litmus test to show that leaders, whether they're in government or whether they're in the opposition, really are bothered about this thing that Kenyans are suffering from? Because we cannot play with it. It is actually a very serious matter. It is. That what, what people is, what were able to purchase mm. with 100 shillings in 2024, even in 2023, is very different from what they were able to purchase three, four short years ago. But it looks as though it's being used as currency for expediency because a particular side is not in government. No. And my question is, mm -hmm. how... Do you reverse that perception? Because would it be a pain point if the roles were reversed? And that's the question that people are asking. Yes. And how do you convince yeah, yeah. people I, of that? I know that um, uh, William Ruto and his government have been arguing about the debt problem hmm. in this country. We have been in government and we know, for example, Kenyans will remember we used to talk of the Paris Club. Uh, where countries would do um, debt rescheduling. We have offered solutions during the National Dialogue Commission mm. uh, Committee. It is not that we are just wanting to take advantage. Far from it. We, we don't want to sound cheap. Mm. But we're dealing with the real suffering of the Kenyan people. And uh, we brought these matters to the table. We even brought our own economic teams. You remember Governor Deritu, uh, one of our foremost young economists, a former governor of Laikipia, yeah. leading our teams on what is the alternative that we, we would want to prefer, uh, prefer before the Kenya. So it is not that we want to uh, take advantage of the suffering of the Kenyan people. We must thank God because now the rains are looking good. Never mind they, they, they didn't even get the weather forecasting right. I think they should have talked to you <laughs> whether we were going to El Nino rains or not. All right? The devastation that then ensued and, and, and the squandering of public resources in the name of trying to deal with that issue of El Nino phenomenon. Mm. Now we thank God for the rains and the good crop. Mm. Right? Mm. But I can tell you this issue of the cost of living and the way the Ken Kenya, Kenya Kwanzaa regime is tackling it will definitely not, uh, it's not satisfactory. We've tried to tell them. In any event, if they feel dissatisfied with that, the William Ruto himself has said he prefers a strong opposition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are not going to sit there and see Kenyans suffering. We will tell it as it is, as the alternative mm. to Kenya Kwanzaa. One of the 
main issues that you've been pushing as Azimio is the repealing of the Finance Act mm. and saying it introduced measures that are the ones that are hurting Kenyans in terms of just taking everything from their pocket from all angles. But then the Finance Act was passed by Parliament. After, as it was passed, that's what I refer to Eric. What was the level and what was the conclusion with regard to the public participation? Over 90% of all those people yep. who participated said no mm -hmm. to that Finance Act including the churches, by the way, yes. and I applaud the Roman Catholic bishops. They have been very consistent because these are men and women through the priests and everybody who, is listen who are listening to what the Kenyans are saying. They are suffering. Mm. It is, again, not populism do. Mm. It isn't. And uh, why would a Catholic bishop want to sound popular? Ah, th this is the reality on the ground. So Kenyans told Parliament... That we don't like is wrong. the proposed measures. Mm. Of course. And yet Parliament And then they decided it. to push it. William Ruto himself has said, these are painful measures. Parliament. And then plays speculation yeah. that uh, hopefully in the years ahead, uh, things will get better. Well, what have other countries done? Kibaki and us mm. brought in the stimulus package to be able to rescue the suffering businesses. Yeah. In his case, it is adding punitive taxes. It stimulus this package is the to the government. Yeah. My question is... Parliament being the independent institution that it, that it should be, yeah. passed this. Mm -hmm. Your party has members in Parliament. In fact, your party occupies the position of deputy minority leader yes. in Parliament, mm -hmm. in those houses. Yeah. Right? And do you know the reality? Why? If why democracy, do we see, Eric, yeah. taking you on that point alone. Yeah. If it had not been the shenanigans, the gerrymandering, the corruptly buying leadership, messing up, and therefore one of the agenda items under NADCO was fidelity to multi-party democracy, mm -hmm. we would be the majority party in parliament. And this is clear. Therefore, you refer to member for Kadiani, uh, who is a WEPA member of candid, uh, for Kadiani constituency, yep. who is a deputy to Wandai. Yep. Um, both of them should actually be the majority and, the, and I mean the majority leader and the deputy majority leader. So Kenyans this, this elected a majority Azimio of members. Course. And then to they parliament. were bought off some of them mm. with all what kinds does of this things. They must be in government. Mean? Buying off means enticing. I think some of them I understand are very unhappy. You remember UDM with two governors, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think seven members of parliament. Mm. Those were the first ones to go. All right? And, 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 and it was very clear in terms of the coalition documentation that they were in Azimio, La Umoja, one Kenya. Yep. Okay. Why would uh, the person or group of persons that have taken leadership yep. go and say, you know, these are our people anyway? Yeah. Like I had to tell and plead with William Ruto and tell him, mm. Mr. President, listen, right? You are Uda leader. Leave Jubilee alone. But did we not see him the other day, even after conclusion of the NADCO sittings, him hosting 100, I say 120 Jubilee MCS. For Chai. For Chai. What does that mean? What you do tell you me. That? What does that Fidelity to the Constitution. I want and to. And fidelity, Constitution, I, I want means to go we, back Kenya, to shall be a multi party democracy. Moshimua. Yeah, look at that Constitution. You're a senior counsel. You have participated in legislation in this country since 1983, right? Yeah. When you joined parliament. And then no, since I joined then, in 85. In 85, I yes. First when, in 83 when, 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 and when, lost. When, when you joined parliament in 85. Mm -hmm. All those years you've participated, even in the writing of this current constitution, Indeed. you are involved. I want to say something that is obviously obvious to you, but it's clearly appearing like it's not obvious. Mm -hmm. We, the people of Kenya, we in the 2010, voted by a majority to adopt a new constitution. Indeed, that's correct. We promulgated a new constitution. We gave ourselves a new constitution. In that constitution, we have de defined several things that are ideals. First, we define our boundaries and say this is a territory called Kenya. And then we also define our ideals. This is the Bill of Rights. Each one of us has a right to this and the other, and some of these rights are inalienable. We then said, we are going to exercise our sovereign authority directly or oh. through elected leaders and Indeed. institutions. And we created those institutions. We created a government and made it a 
three stooled government mm -hmm. three legged uh, stool mm -hmm. we said there's going to be an executive we shall elect the head of that executive we said there's going to be a judiciary we are not going to elect it but we shall have proper mechanisms of making sure that only the best sit in that Indeed. in that judiciary we shall elect our direct representatives into the houses of parliament and we said we shall give them powers this our representatives parliament was given powers by the people to represent them it was given powers by the people to write laws that would ensure that we achieve our ideals as a people it was given powers by the people to create a budget mm -hmm. and to manage that budget by oversighting the executive and making sure that everything that the executive does is in accordance with the law and parliament has a stick that it can use to bring the executive back in line and if there's any dispute it can then go to the judiciary Indeed. we shall be the independent arbiter mm. we have given parliament so much powers we have even given parliament powers to receive reports from independent offices the office of the auditor general the office of the control of budget if there's any misuse of our public funds the control of budget and the auditor general shall flag it to parliament parliament shall use that report to also whip the executive back in line mm -hmm. so in you, this you matrix make, you make you make a very good constitutional lawyer by the way <laughs> I, i'm a good student of what you've been saying in this entire matrix parliament is a very very powerful institution we the people have given parliament so much power please explain to me Mushimiwa, what witchcraft is this <laughs> that we can then see parliament yes. coming back to the people and saying it has been emasculated by the executive how wonderful unfortunately that is what has happened how? and i gave you an example of for example emasculating the political outcomes immediately after the elections that uh, Kenya would actually have ended up like the situation in the US today where the democrats are the majority in congress all right and i think the the republicans um, are, are the majority in the senate you can correct me on that and and that would be very good in terms of checks and balances it would be a very strong parliament if the executive is led by Kenya Kwanza and the legislature is in the hands of Azimio mm -hmm. but they did not want to allow that so the first emasculation happened at that point first of all getting the numbers uh, creating fear intimidation and then you end up and this seems to continue and by the way the outcomes of the of national dialogue committee was that this should stop this is why it is important for parliament to adopt that report because under its terms we will cause amendment to article 103 of the constitution where for example if an odm member and you remember some of them were dewhipped and some of them were even removed as members of parliament all right but to to give effect to that that decision we need to amend the constitution at article 103 so that if a member voluntarily or goes through a disciplinary process of his own political party and they are removed then they have to go back to the electorate and seek a fresh mandate this is how to make sure the emasculation of parliament stops as it is it continues you know all goodies um, <laughs> by the way i think the reality uh, eric if you check the reality mm. uh, is is that this is a continuing process because people are afraid mm. that the parliament acts properly like in the matter of the uh, this this taxation proposals yeah. then they will say stop it but you want to uh, a situation where the executive um, uh, bulldozes through parliament mm. and this is what we are saying must stop and the same of course the three legged too uh, the law for example the law society of kenya is to ensure that they give proper advice to along with that of the attorney general mm. to the executive which they can choose uh, to follow as in this case of course they have chosen to go their own way but yeah. you know what yeah. i find mm. i find this hard to swallow and to fathom but we the right? people and by the way on that if, one eric remember if we created this institution yes and made it 
powerful is it that those who are going into the office of member of parliament of senator do not understand the power that they wield I'm is sure it that the institution do. of parliament does not understand they because do. why parliament gives the executive the budget mm. but then parliament is pleading with the executive for the implementation of that budget parliament is going on strike because money has not been given back to parliament we try to deal with that issue by the way but listen to me we the people all right and the people delegate the power to do all those things to their elected representatives but where are the elected representatives in parliament say even in the counter assemblies act in contravention of the people's expectations then the people have the right to withdraw that delegated authority mm -hmm. this is when people say we go to the streets we demand our rights mm -hmm. our own people have been bought off and please allow that situation away members of parliament actually do get bought mm -hmm. yeah mm. they actually do get bought yep um and and so we must make sure that doesn't continue that's why i'm saying fidelity to the rule of law mm. fidelity to the constitution that is what to save us and i started by saying the constitution itself is a living document mm. okay and and it uh, on occasion we may have to cause one or two amendments that the american constitution i think went through several amendments so but as of now let us stick to what we have a very progressive constitution very strong uh under the bill of rights uh, the chapter on the bill of rights and and the rights basic rights of the kenyan people the right to shelter the right to decent life mm -hmm. the right to education all those basic rights are written there and when they see a violation yeah of those rights they have the right to go to the streets so when then, they, that yeah. happens mm. police should not come with live bullets and them. shoot them dead so then maybe the question is then the constitution is not what has the issue the constitution is not what has the problem mm -hmm. that is prescribed it's properly it's the leaders then who have been transferred to whom this power has mm. been transferred delegated. to to delegated to mm. who have an issue yes it's the members of parliament it's those who hold the the the, the least but in my opinion some of the fundamentally most important uh, centers of power it's those who have what I'll simply call bad manners and are not actually doing what ought to be done and so then we have a collapsed system mm -hmm. so the constitution doesn't have an issue and this is my question with whomever leader will be there in the future because many would argue that currently we're in a bit of a problem a bit of a problem is an understatement <laughs> it is <laughs> i'm choosing my words carefully <laughs> yeah. for the purposes of sanity now if we say that somebody who is that person going to be who will uphold the sanctity of the law who will uphold the sanctity of the rights of the people because as far as i'm concerned if the picture of the nation is the most vulnerable people that's the true picture and if that's the picture that's being painted and remains that what people are looking at then we have a problem and if we can easily say as though it's nothing that leaders to whom this power has been delegated can be easily bought off we have to ask ourselves the question what on earth is going on and we're still being asked 5 years after 5 years to put hope back into, into those same, same people you chawi how no chawi yeah who do who do it's some serious Indeed. juju but I, we must I, we must not lose hope we must not lose hope but allow me to say we are not again as a country operating as an island all right we are within a community of nations and and this country is space our own space is even getting violated because of misru at home you now seeing yeah that the existence a very foundation of the east african community itself and we have the east african uh, treaty establishing the community the membership has grown to uh, uh, include kenya uganda tanzania rwanda burundi south sudan so are currently the chair and drc and, mm -hmm. and even recently somalia yep. now look at that market for kenyan goods if only we can get our manufacturing sector going working 24/7 again without pilferage without stealing 
All right? And I don't want to address corruption. Corruption has been spoken of so much that Kenyans have become immune to that thing. They wonder, will anybody ever help us out of this? But these, uh, the standards of performance, the, the normal interstate relations, even this is threatened. The DRC withdrew the ambassador to Kenya. Sudan, a member of IGAD, has withdrawn his ambassador to Kenya. Of course, Somalia and Ethiopia are almost uh, at each other's uh, logo. It's not none of our doing as a country. But look at, and I'm happy that Kenya, Kenya always <laughs> have resolved the issue with Tanzania because it's beginning to look another front. Uganda has taken Kenya to the East African Court of Justice because of the infamous G2G <laughs> matter of, of how we, we fuel our vehicles and how we should treat a landlocked country like Uganda, like Rwanda, like Burundi, okay? So you're looking at a situation where the country is becoming like a, a lone ranger. Mm. So our own diplomacy is at stake and nobody takes Kenya seriously. That's another problem, mm. okay? And we have, as Kenyans, I think if, if we, we do need to have that conversation and see how we can restore. For example, nobody, nobody should be allowed to demean the importance of the community. As I started by saying, even others borrowed from us in the 70s. But right now, we're in a flux again. The goofing we see. Remember so at the beginning of this thing, first of all, uh, people say that uh, uh, Kenya was the, uh, cutting off uh, diplomatic relations with the Sahrawi Republic yep. and others and others, only to realize, wow, another goof. So, but some of us are there, some of us are there to assist because in the interest of the country, mm. well, then we, we stop being opposition <laughs> and we are ready to help where we can. Mm. Accountability is a big thing, Mishmiwa. In yeah. those that have been entrusted with positions of leadership, they ought to be accountable at every stage, whether they were in, they're in office or even after they're in office. Now we look at the things that have happened in this country over many years, and we keep skipping the beat on accountability. Yeah. You are involved in the diplomacy to push for, let's have an internal justice mechanism mm -hmm. for the post-election violence, of 2007. Indeed. It did not happen. It didn't happen. Even locally, those that participated in killing, in destroying property, in maiming their neighbors, were never held to account. Indeed. And, and that conversation today, just went by the and way, died. I can tell you that people in Kisi, because the community of Kisi were badly affected at, at the border, Chebilat area, border yep. between Kericho and, and Kisi. And, and, and Kisi's got, got hold of their fellow Kisis and gave them houses and residence and comfort and to date that problem has never been addressed. The issue of internally displaced and justice for them and people were uprooted from their farms in the Rift Valley and other places. That issue has just been glossed over. Yep. So when Kenyans look at this they wonder what is our justice system? So it is important to look again as those historical injustices, people, people in these days you hear some of them saying uh, state capture. I don't know from which, which angle mm. is <laughs> state capture. Mm. Uh, but there are basic issues that should have been addressed and in order to bring correct healing and real healing to this country, a country of great potential, yeah. very hard working people. And yet we want we to be able to release their potential. Kenyans look at leaders such as yourself the top national leaders of this country, you are one am among the few, maybe are about seven of you, right, who are the top leadership of the country. And we don't hear much about the conversation on the justice. The Agenda 4 commissions after the 2008 dialogue was uh, reached, there was a Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission produced a report. Mm -hmm. Krigler produced a report on mm -hmm. how we should do our elections. Indeed. Even since then, there have been incidences of violence, of violation of people's rights, and there have been calls for accountability and justice. But we don't hear consistent and strong voices from the likes of Kalonzo Musioka on this. From the likes of Kalonzo Musioka saying, as WIPA, this will be our continuous call for the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission report to be discussed in Parliament. 
because we are a parliamentary political party this shall be the one thing that we keep asking every new cycle I we don't hear challenge. this from I you I take your challenge Eric and we will need to do that because if we just gloss over issues and hope that uh, time heals then we may find that in generations to come we might be back at the same situation and the whole thing is born of stolen elections if we can get rid of um this 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 cancer of every so often people doing all kinds of things kamagos and the rest of them from venezuela <laughs> and others yeah messing up our own sovereignty and where the chief justice for example and our team if you remember sitting as a supreme court made an order that this venezuelan company should open the servers and you know what they did they even could not obey that order citing intellectual property rights and what have you so you you see that our own uh, sense of independence gets a grist upon so those are issues and the pertinent issues i i share with you eric that we need to open discussion so we bring closure the problem is all those reports are there but they never been brought up to public discussion i remember during the national dialogue uh, uh, committee sittings mm -hmm. we heard from attorney general emeritus emos wako who has been a key player in in the history of this country mm -hmm. saying we perhaps need a national conversation a national conversation when the healing takes place or when the political situation allows it may be important as kenyans remember one time even ndamze moi we had a conference at the KICC uh which was dumped the Kenya we want mm -hmm. the Kenya we want so we we must stop this aggression one arm of government against yep. the other one in violation of the constitution and we the people are just sitting there watching in dismay even as they come up and say they want to sell <laughs> state corporations mm. the KICC for example i i and i think that uh, Uh, that conversation was very interesting i mm. followed it mm. uh -huh. so it looks like somebody gave the wrong figures to william and 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 that was not what kicc as a parastetto was able to make mm. it's an iconic building even uh, if you look at i think kenya currency notes you will see yep. that a kicc is not to be played with you know there are things that are Uh, of in the category of national heritage mm. which should not be played with but on this issue eric of governance i've seen uh, today in today's um, uh, one of the publications i think the not the people daily the one dealing with economic issues business, talking business about daily yeah the business, business daily, daily. Yep. I, i really admire business daily but today they come up with something the cabinet uh, approved on what they are calling single something yeah, it's a, a treasury, treasury single account a treasury single account yeah that, that's another very interesting situation we should be talking of separating in order to act in the best interest of what the constitution provides and strengthen devolution have a separation i think okay um, um, i saw him arguing um tata argue about this point a separation between the ministry of finance and the national treasury yeah because whoever is in position uh, wield power can always manipulate a situation hence you hear them uh, rightly or wrongly arguing about empty coffers yep. we should be able to make it impossible for anybody leaving office not to interfere with the national treasury of course those are allegations and they remain as allegations okay. one year after mm. they took office for that to why happen why would they say they don't have the necessary funds for that to happen It's just a piece of legislation yeah through parliament i'm hoping to see that this is going to be a wipe out sponsored push this. we will push this through senate i've given instructions to senator ambua he actually briefed me that they are going to have a bill in the senate to deal with this matter of separation mm -hmm. okay in order to act in the best interest of of devolution mm. of the national treasury as a custodian yeah. of our heritage we and are not gov governments who come in today and they leave tomorrow We, I, I hear you we are where we are right now as a country where like you've said rightly said going around the country and people are feeling the pain of the economic situation brought about in part by the current debt burden even the president said the other day one of the things that's keeping him awake is this debt issue out of seven more than 70% of revenues are going into repaying debt 
and looking back and wondering does this debt actually lead to was it properly applied or was it not what's wiper's position on our current mm. situation <laughs> first of all we must remind uh, president william ruto that he was part and parcel of jubilee government he was not even vice president by the way he was deputy president for 10 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had me say I was Kibaki's vice president for only five years, and we grew this economy, mm -hmm. along with, of course, the Grand Coalition government partners, including Ray Laudinga. Him and William and 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 his boss that Uhuru. time, mm -hmm. Uru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. were in charge of the reins of leadership for ten good years, when they went for those commercial loans. And remember, Kenyans will have forgotten the story of a euro bond. We may uh, one of these days ask ourselves who are the true beneficiaries of that saga mm -hmm. and where were they so Wh they're now why claiming do we need, and why do we need to ask that question much more? because as we unveil the truth about state capture and whatever <laughs> they might find their oil and gross in it mm -hmm. we have followed and i think that uh, my friend jimmy wanjigi has been here mm. and i know him as a serious operative and he can tell you a lot about the the story of the standard railway gauge all those things the culmination of which was heavy external debt but the way to deal with the debt issue mm. is to negotiate to negotiate you don't lord it over i repeat lord it over poor citizens to carry the burden of corruption if you like that's a problem So But William Ruto was deputy president for 10 years. What is Wiper's position? And therefore he can ne never lay any claim to <laughs> to relating economically with President Kibaki. He can't pass it on and say that he's not No, he's really yeah, passing on, running away from responsibility. Yeah. First of all, he must own up. Say so was deputy president for 10 years. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What is Wiper's position on our national debt? Well, we must well, our position is we will need to renegotiate mm -hmm. uh particularly where Uh, the knock on effect is the high cost of living so wiper getting a space and wiper is operating within the framework of azmio okay. our position has been elaborated very very clearly what does renegotiation mean team. we have seen ethiopia yes. opening conversation yeah. on renegotiating its debt mm -hmm. which has led to it having to default so that it renegotiates Mm. Is that what you're advocating? Of course, default. And on this point, I agree with William. Everything must be done to make sure the countries are not default. But the way they go about it, that's a the deception in economics, deception in management. The, the external debt should not be used as an excuse mm. to mess around with the, the Kenyans' one. welfare. Okay, um, you know. Winding down to the end of this, but look, you've written a, you wrote a book. Um, I think it's up. To, uh, it must be due for, up, up, up. What yeah. is it? Or writing another edition? Yes, you need a new edition. A new edition, right? Updating a number of things. Yes. Against all odds, Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka talk about you know traversing the political sphere, growing up, and then entering into politics, working as you know, uh, negotiator for peace in the region. But one of the things that struck me is talk about your fears. You talk about your fears in the political space and your fears for the country. And I think it's important for any leader worth his or her salt to acknowledge some of those fears. And even as we look through some of the things that you've documented here and the dates and the different things that happened, are some of those fears still resident with you today? Hmm. You know, one of the very interesting do uh, chapters was uh, uh, because we had occasion to discuss this. Um, I think we had a conversation even here. about coalition formations and disbanding of the same uh, was when in that book uh, William Ruto comes to my house with uh, with uh, Huru Kenyatta at night at night mm. yeah i was waiting for them from seven o'clock mm. i think they must have passed through some street corner and discuss a strategy <laughs> on how to deal with me they came we ended up by the way the convener of that meeting was Jimmy Wanjigi mm. he was the Mr he Fix was the, he was the in between uh, yeah. was an agent provocateur yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he brought them mm. that's why we say we know each other so well and you know out of that 
I have heard stories saying that I said uh, that um, when the two of them when they are go taken to, jail. to the Hague, mm. go to jail, you come then I'll take over. Can you imagine and you will what, protect what them. Vice President, leave alone the Vice President, and um, um, no more human being would wish to tell a suffering duo that when you guys go to jail, I'll come and help you. Mm. Ridiculous. That's why I'm suing Duale. Because he has written a book on that chapter. He mm. was not in it. Yep. Yeah. And it's a very exciting, exciting suit yes. against <laughs> Duale. Because he wrote about things he doesn't know. Therefore, I commend Kenyans to read my book again. If you allow me, you can show them against all odds. So, so you never you said those words? So no. So what are not. your fears? The record is very straight. Mm. So what are yeah. your fears? You remember, I had just finished doing the infamous Chateau Diplomacy. Mm. Okay? And I was saying that I offered that I will continue with this effort. Right? And, and there are things which, of course, are some are state secrets. Mm. I can't even tell you the things I was able to do on their behalf mm -hmm. with President Kibaki, I can't talk about those. What are your fears? My fears is um, the, this, this merry-go-round political situation, manipulation. Mm -hmm. You know, by the way, it looks to me, the reason I say 2024 is a defining year, mm -hmm. it looks to me that um, some of my political colleagues I've been in this business of saying, stop this fellow. Mm -hmm. should never take over the leadership of this country. Yeah. Then they play manipulation, this manipulative go. <laughs> if, if I was to tell you, for example, the same Jim, Jimmy Wanjigi brought William Ruto, or went to see William Ruto with him, William Ruto swore, ah, I will support my brother Steve. Let me handle Horu Kenyatta. I am ready to become the majority leader. And you will be the president, Uhuru will be the deputy. Mm. All those things, mm. okay? Uh, so, this time round, we are not into that kind of game. Mm. We are ready, we know the game, we know we've been cheated, we know we've been manipulated, and we are going, everything is subject to the will of the people. If the will of the people is we run to the ballot, we will. You've been played too many times. Absolutely. And mm. not again. Yeah, not okay. again. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think I've suffered. I should not be in opposition. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Where were you being I played? was ready, by the way, to become president in 2002. Adim Zemoy allowed me and Uhuru to go to Kasarani. Remember when the late uh, Joseph Kamodo used to say, Kasarani in Kichinjiu, mm. all right? Yeah. Had we gone there, I think one of the things that would have happened, maybe I would have defeated my friend Uhuru. Mm. But that was not to happen. Why do All they that story is told there on October 10, mm. how, in 2002, how we met Mzemo in State House. And he, we in the company, on the one side, Uhuru Kenyatta, the late, uh, the late uh, Toto Man was there, mm -hmm. the late uh, Senator Yusuf Haji, mm -hmm. those who are Uhuru's uh, strong men. And I was there with the late George Saitoti, mm -hmm. Moody Awori, mm -hmm. and Raila Odinga, the Rainbow Team, yep. remember? Yep. That was in 2002. So... All these things are uh, documented, and I think it is good for Kenyans to know the history. Yeah. We are coming to the conclusion. I just want to ask that final question. You're yes. saying basically, fool me once, but not again. You've been yeah. fooled many times. Indeed. And you feel that this time you are not going to be fooled again. What safeguards are these that you've put to make sure that you don't get fooled again? Early agreements, so that we know, settle the politics of this country, so that uh, those in authority know what they are up against. And we also say um, that um, those in authority, those who wield the instruments of power, should not, for God's sake, say that uh, this, this, uh, this upanga is not for Kukata Sukumawiki. Mm. Oh, that is terrible, coming for a leader. All right? We, those fears, because in an opposition, you know, begin to say these fellows are going to plot against you and do harm to you. Mm. We are past the era of political assassinations. If you dare, if you want me to repeat, under Constitution 2010, the freedom of expression, the freedom of assembly, the freedom to talk, the freedom to disagree, are all enshrined in our supreme document, the Constitution. Therefore, this country should be able to act freely. Those who cannot take criticism should not personalize issues. And they know there's a role, and mm. that is my fear, because we are seeing some tendencies that want to drive us backwards. Mm. 
so that uh, if you are meeting like we the other day, uh, my brother Baba <laughs> had his birthday. And how do you allow the police to go and, and, and actually yeah, commit a thing mm. which has taken them, I think, to the Guinness Book of Records? <laughs> Tear gassing a cake, a birthday <laughs> cake. I, I, I want anybody to tell me where in the world that has happened. And if that is not retrogression, what yeah. is it? Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, leader, Wiper Democratic Movement Party. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Asante Thank you. Sana for joining us in the hot seat. Thank you for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.